How can love be so cruel? That's the uh, question that I want to approach today delicately. Um, as a uh, someone commented on one of my videos as a, as a response to a video that I had posted back about a month ago or so, I'll link it below. And it was about, is it possible that I um, was integral in orchestrating my experience here on earth in this incarnation when it comes to childhood abuse? And if so, how does that restory everything that I have been through? And how can I come out feeling more empowered in that? And this is what this person responded. It's a fantastic comment and one that I want to address today. This is what this person writes. It seems like higher selves are cruel to their personality selves. After all, the higher self never suffers, but the personality self can and does experience tremendous pain and suffering as a child and adult. How could love be so cruel? Or is it simply karma that has to be experienced for harmful actions taken in the past? With all of this suffering that's happening in this game that Source and Higher Selves are playing, it just seems cruel to the human personalities because of the intense suffering and pain that so many go through. Excellent, excellent comment. Now, I'm not going to address the karma question in here if you are interested in uh, me unpacking a little bit more about what I think about karma leave a comment below and I'll create a video about that. I want to address specifically how can love be so cruel? Okay, I wanna hold space for this person who has commented this, myself, who I could have written that back a few years ago, going, hey, what the heck? I come across this video that says, I don't know, maybe I came here orchestrating all of, maybe not the details, but I basically came in and said, as God spark, I want to wake up and remember myself in a place of experiencing forgiveness. And in such, if that's the case, someone's got to really piss me off and hurt me so that I can forgive them. And what if... What if that's what happened? That's basically what the video said. And I've got another video that I gave a testimony very, very specific to that. And I'll link that one below as well. And it's, um, it's gosh, it's my story of forgiveness and what I think may have happened before I got here with the players in the game. And again, I don't want to belittle it. I don't want to... Um, make less any of the pain that we have experienced in this life. Absolutely not. But I do want to say this. How can love be so cruel? That is a question that is posed at a very specific density, a third dimension density that says, love is supposed to be this way, there's good and there's bad. There's black and there's white. There's up and there's down. There's past and there's future. Very dichotomous. There's good and there's bad. There's good experiences and bad experiences. Okay? So this particular question, how can love be so cruel, is posed, is asked from a third dimension density where the higher selves are in this dimension, in this density, and the source is in this other dimension, this other density, and it is allowing all these cruel things to happen to the players, to the personalities, to the incarnated beings here. And how could love be so cruel as to let that happen? And just dispassionately watch it all. Here's my answer, which I think is going to be, well, I won't qualify it. Here's my answer. And the reason that I have come to this answer and to this conclusion, and I'm willing to say 
tomorrow I might come to a different conclusion as I continue to scoop the poop. And by that I mean, I'm that kind of person, I'm that kid, <laughs> there's this story that says there are two kids, both locked in rooms, and the whole room is filled with horse poop. One kid is pissing and moaning and all upset, how could this, and life sucks, and he's just struggling. He is suffering in the pain of being stuck in a room with horse poop. This other kid is uh, digging around in the horse poop. He's got it under his fingernails. It's smeared over his face. I mean, he's just filled in the smell of it all. And yet, when asked, what the hell are you doing in there? The kid said, well, with all of this horse poop in here, I figure there's got to be a pony. Got to be a pony in here somewhere. I have lived that life of pissing and moaning about all the horse shit in life. And, I and, and what I did was I continued to say, I could stay pissing and moaning about the horse shit, but it doesn't make the horse shit go away. So I'll start digging around and I'll start looking for the pony in all of it because there's gotta be a pony in it. That's been my journey. I went from being the kid that says, this isn't fair, this isn't right, I'm suffering, and this sucks, it shouldn't be this way, to saying, it looks like this isn't gonna change. So the onus is on me to change. And I started digging, looking for the pony. And boy, did I find them over and over and over and over again. And by looking for the pony, what I mean is I'm looking for, I don't want to say the lesson. I'm looking for the beauty in the experience. I'm looking for the experience itself and seeing it as beautiful. Okay, so... Let me lay just, just a little bit more. I want to keep this short. The human experience itself, it's, it's inevitable that there will be pain. That's the human experience. There will be pain. Here's what's optional. Suffering. If you ask that little kid who's sitting there pissing and moaning, are you suffering? He'd say, oh, hell yeah. It's not fair that there's all this horse shit everywhere. Not fair. It shouldn't be this way. I got wronged. I'm the victim of something. This isn't fair. If you were to ask this other kid who's busy looking for a pony, are you suffering? Probably he would say, well, I'm in pain, this is uncomfortable, and I'm not really, you know, enjoying shit underneath my fingernails and the smell of it, and some of it got in my mouth too, and that's really disgusting. But I am keeping myself occupied by looking for the pony, and that's exciting. Yeah, I don't think I'm struggling. I'm making the best of this situation. I'm looking for the pony in the shit. It's got to be in here somewhere. Look, I think I see a tail. I see a hoof. I'm sure there's a pony in here. Pain is part of the incarnation. The suffering is part of the ego that says, it's not supposed to be this way. Struggling and suffering, well, suffering is part of the story that we write about the pain that we're going through. The suffering is the story that we put on top of the pain that we're going through. That struggling, I'm sorry, that suffering is not 
inevitable. It's not necessary. It doesn't have to be. You can restory. You can re-perspective. You can look at it differently. You can get down on your hands and knees and start looking for the pony. Last point. I want to come back even further. How can love be so cruel? Here's my point of view from what I understand things to be. Source. Source that says, I want to experience myself. I want to experience myself in a body. I want to experience myself in a body. I want to experience who I am in a body. And the only way that I can do that is if I fractal myself so that there are other people to interact with. And then to experience myself, to wake up and remember myself, I have to have forgotten who I am. So as I slow down the frequency and I become matter, I come, become incarnate in a body, I understand that Part of that is going to be, part of that is going to be forgetting so that I can remember. And in my forgetting that I'm God spark and I'm all power and that I'm having an experience and that this is quite the adventure, in my forgetting, I'm going to experience pain. And then in my forgetting, I'm going to experience pain and I'm going to suffer. But along the way, I'm going to allow some little things to happen that will jar me a little bit to start being open to a frequency that says, I wonder, I wonder if I don't need to suffer that I can allow the experience and allow the feelings to come and go. If I can allow the experience and not label it wrong or unfair, I can just say, oh, I'm experiencing this and it is really freaking uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Ah. But it's not wrong. How do I know? Because it's the experience that I've created for myself. It's the experience that I'm having. See, as I, as I was looking for the pony, and I've been looking for the pony for years and years and years, like 21 years now, this is the conclusion that I have come to. And it is the most empowering place for me to find myself. I am God spark. And I slowed down matter, or I slowed down frequency until I incarnated. And I am having an experience where I forgot about who I was for the longest time. And I am in the in the past 20 years awakening to the fact that, oh my goodness. I'm God, having an experience. And what does that mean then? It means there is pain that was part of it, part of the forgetting. I have a body, so there's pain. But not necessarily suffering anymore. See, I've... I've, moved frequencies, expanded frequencies to be able to hear, integrate, resonate with the fact that there can be pain. And that's the way it is. That was part of what I agreed to before I came. 
but not necessarily suffering. But it took suffering to wake me up to realizing. So suffering has its place. It's not inconsequential. The shit in the horse, uh, it has its place. And it is the most freeing place in this where I, than I have ever been. It is so freeing. Does that mean I never get afraid that I'm never gonna experience pain? No, I, I know that I'm gonna experience pain. I know that that's part of my experience here. It's just that I don't make it wrong. I just make it really uncomfortable and, 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 and emotional, but those emotions are only uncomfortable. They're not good or bad. They're just emotions that I'm allowing my body to feel, to experience, and then be on their way. I don't hold on to them, I don't resist them, and I don't make them wrong or unfair. I don't allow myself to paint myself as the victim of circumstances. I go, hold on here. What if this was exactly the way I planned it? And if you're going, you know what? Mm-mm. I, I, mm-mm-mm. Okay. All right. I can hold space for you in that. This is the experience that I'm having. And it has caused me to realize such freedom, so I share that point of view with you. If that's not the experience you're having, here's what I would encourage you to do. Keep looking for the pony. Keep being open. I don't know, maybe, maybe something of what she's saying is right. Maybe. Do the best you can to sit in nature, to be in nature, to eat quality food, to drink purified water, to imbue everything that you're doing with infinite love and deep gratitude. Look at hands over the heart. How many times have I put my hands over my heart to remind me, come back into your heart space, come out of your mind and down into your heart space on your way to being in your body. That's enough for today. That's a lot. I work one-on-one -on -one with people. If you would like an appointment, please check the information below. If you want more info on my thoughts on karma, my thoughts on why we incarnated, like why the, it's more than just the experience. There's a reason it's happening right now. Let me know in the comments below and I'll create a series of videos. What the hell is going on in the world? And why are so many people waking up and remembering and being curious about what's going on in the world. Because there's a whole lot of good going on. It really is, it's, it's good. Um, it's, uh, it's, the, it, it's, it's amazing. It's exciting. It's like, oh my goodness but we're not doing it alone and there's a purpose behind it. So, all right guys, uh, be uh, sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.